Today we are going to do chapter 10, lesson 5, the hands-on fractions on a number line. For this one, I would suggest using the laminated sheet that I printed for you that has, um, at the top it says problems to solve, and it's got some block models and says fraction equation, and all the way down at the bottom is a number line. And you can use a marker or a dry erase marker and you can draw on that number line and then just erase it when you're done with the problem. So I would suggest using that one for today. So let's start with number one. We're gonna represent the fractions one third, two thirds and three thirds on a number line. We're gonna start at the left and place a one third fraction tile on the above number line. Trace the tile and shade in the figure. So you have fraction tiles as well, though I don't know if they'll fit exactly. So we're just going to do this with drawing. So this is my one third. I'm going to color that in with pink. And it's asking, what fraction does this shaded area represent? Well, it's one third of this whole. So I'm going to put one over three. For the second step, it says to place a second and third tile above on the number line next to the shaded figure. Trace those tiles. So I'm gonna pick a different color, but let's do blue for our second tile. And pick brown for our third tile. He asks, what fraction do the two first two shaded areas represent together? So we already had our one third. Well, if we have one third plus one third, it's going to be two thirds. And they're showing that down here at the bottom. And what fraction do all three shaded areas represent? Well, if we have one plus one plus one is gonna equal three. It's gonna be three over three. How many parts does each fraction represent? Well, one third, we only placed one part. Two thirds, we placed two parts. And three thirds, place three parts. So let's go on to the next page. One endpoint of the fraction tile that represents one third is at zero. So that's down here. Make a tick mark on the number line to show the other endpoint and label the fraction. Well, they've already showed that to us over here where that fraction is going to be one. So our number line starts at zero and ends at one. One endpoint of the two fraction tiles represents two thirds is at the zero. So if we have one third tile, we know our endpoint is going to be one third. And in part two, they're showing us one tile plus one tile, we know is two thirds. So that endpoint is going to be two thirds. And we just labeled that fraction. Now it asks, where would you place the tick mark for the fraction three thirds? Well, if one third was where the first tile ends and two thirds is where the second tile ends, three thirds is gonna be where the third tile ends. So we can say where the third tile ends. On to number two. Sam is making a number line and wants to mark a point for three fourths on the number line. Into how many parts should he divide the number line? Well, we don't even have to draw a number line for this one because we know from the denominator that tells us how many total parts. So we can say four parts. Number three. Suppose Lisa makes a number line from zero to one. Then she divides the number line into eight parts. What seven fractions will she place at each tick mark between zero and one? Well, I'm gonna use this answer line down here to help me write out my answer. 
So she starts at zero and ends at one. We know there's gonna be a half. And so now I have eight equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I don't. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're not quite equal, but they're equal enough. So we know we're gonna start with one eighth and then two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and one also equals eight eighths. On to the next page. Number four, we're gonna label each unknown with the fraction of the whole it represents. So think back to your pattern, that might help you with this one. So it's showing us one sixth, one sixth, one sixth. If each one of these is equal, this one's also gonna be one sixth. Same with this one. Number five, well, these are equal sizes and we know that there are three of them. So all of these are gonna equal one third. On to number six, label the fractions on the number line between zero and one. So this time we're not looking at separate tiles up here, but we're looking at how much does it equal. So if we go between zero and one, and we know our denominator is two because it's showing us that down here. So we're gonna have one half, one over two. Number seven. So we know our denominator is always gonna be four for this one. And if we take one jump, two jumps, so we're gonna have two fourths, three jumps would be three fourths. And then we can check our answer and do one more jump would be four fourths. Now down to number eight. Well, we can look back at the problem we just did on the other page, or we can see that each one of these ends in an eight. So our denominator is gonna be an eight. And we just have to fill in the numbers. So in between three and five is four between five and seven is six, and we just need to count backwards from three. So three minus one is two, two minus one is one. Number nine, two six is represented by point what? So we're just gonna write down underneath what each point represents. So this would be one six, two six, three sixths, four sixths they already give us, and five sixths. And we know six is the denominator because they already tell us that. So what point is represented by two sixths? That's gonna be C. Do that again for number 10. So four fourths is represented, well, they even tell us that right here at the end is D. But just to check our answer, we'll fill in the other ones. So our denominator is four. So we have one fourth and three fourths. On to the next page. There are six students in the science lab. Four of the students are girls. Label the fraction on the number line which represents the number of students that are girls. Well, we don't even have to fill in the numbers down here with the fractions. We can just say one, two, three four, five, and remember that our denominator is always gonna be six for this one. So four of the students are girls. So we can fill in one, two, three, four. So this is our fraction, four, six. Number 12, Max drank two fourths of his fruit smoothie. Label the fraction on the number line which represents the portion of fruit smoothie Mac drank. So 
we know our denominator is going to be four. So we can put that down. And if we count up, zero, one, two, three. So if you drink two fourths, go one, two, it's going to be this one right here. Number 13, a walking trail is eight miles long. Sable has walked two more miles than Sherry. Sherry has walked three-eighths of the trail. Label the fraction on the number line, which represents the part of the trail Mabel has walked. So first we have to figure out how much Sherry has walked. So it says Sherry has walked three-eighths. So first we've got to label our number line. We've got one-eighth, two-eighths, three-eighths, four-eighths, five-eighths, six eighths and seven eighths. So let's fill in what Sherry's walked. She's walked three eighths of the trail. So we can go one, two, three. Uh, it tells us Mabel has walked two more miles. So we can fill in one, two. So Mabel has walked five eighths of the mile. On number 14. Partition the number line into six. Label each point on the number line. So we have to start with zero and end with six sixths, which is also equal to one. So we need to have six different sections. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So then we'll label this. Our denominator is always going to be six. Three six, four six, and five six. So I won't write the answer to number 15, but let's talk about it. So why are number lines helpful models to use to represent fractions? Well, not all the time are you going to have fraction blocks or fraction um, manipulatives with you. Sometimes you'll just have a piece of paper. And you can always draw out a number line on a piece of paper and figure it out that way. On to your homework. So you're going to do this on your own, but let's go through a couple of them to show you what we're going to be doing. Let's go down to the practice. So we've already done this. We're going to label the unknown of the fraction of the whole it represents. So if we know our denominator is 4, all our denominators up here are going to be 4. And we fill in counting one to two, two to three, three to four. Now, this is tricky. They're trying to trick you here. And I fell for it. So they're showing us how much this one block would be. So instead of these being two, three, and four, they're all going to be equal. So. This is going to be a one, and this is going to be a one, and this is going to be a one. So I hope you're paying attention to the difference there, that when it shows us this span, they want to know what fraction tile you would place. So let's do number two, too, just to make sure we've got this. So it's showing us a span here again. So our denominator is going to be eight for all of these. And our numerator is going to be the same all the way across. It's going to be 1. Okay, so for these ones, you're going to label the fractions. You're going to fill in a fraction for each one of these lines. And then you're going to tell what fraction is represented by each of these points. So you're still going to have to fill in this line, and then it'll tell you the answer right away. So you've got this, and I will see you tomorrow.